thought I'd turn the camera on for this. I am uh, running low on the LEDs that I use for the Nintendo Top Loader. I'm down to my last three out of the last batch that I made. Just going to show you how I actually make them. So I buy this ribbon cable. It's multicolored. I believe it comes pre-cut in one foot lengths. And there's 20 conductors, so I need two conductors per LED, so I end up with 10 LEDs per strip. And these are my resistors. It's just a 120 ohm. And these are the LEDs. So I usually start with putting a bunch of the LEDs and resistors together. I'm going to spread the legs of the LED, and wrap one leg of the resistor around the cathode of the LED like that. And I'll do a bunch of those, have them ready for the solder pot, and I'll take the ribbon cable and split it in a bunch of places. Let's just say four at a time. That way it makes it easier my wire strippers to strip them off quickly and I'll do all of those just like that and then I'll get out my solder pot not a very common tool for hobbyists but well, this is uh, 60 40 solder in here just plug it in, turn it on, set your temperature, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll dip my assemblies. I'll uh, actually to use my flux pin, put some flux on everything, and just dip my assembly into the solder, and it's soldered. I don't have to sit here and you know feed my .0 two inch solder in, in my solder iron onto each little assembly. I can just, boom, it's done. It's a lot, lot faster. So I'll probably just uh, do a time lapse of this. It's going to take a long time. Okay, there was about 15 minutes worth of video here so I shrunk it down to about three minutes. Uh, I start off counting out my LEDs and really the only reason I did this was just to be sure that I was going to have enough of everything. I knew I had enough resistors so I wasn't worried about that but I wasn't sure about the ribbon cable. So after I counted out the resistor, or counted out the LEDs then I uh, uh, counted my uh, strips of, of one foot lengths of uh, ribbon cable and then divided that out as needed and then pretty much the rest of this clip is just wrapping that resistor around the negative lead of the LED
Yeah, I counted 64. I got some leftover resistors, that's weird. I probably packaged those by weight and didn't didn't get it quite right. That's okay, I'll take the extra. So now I think I'll move on to stripping these down. Okay, there's really not much to see in this clip. I, uh, like in the first time I showed it, I, I separate it into two pairs, so there's four wires, and that, I only do that to make it easier for that, uh, wire strip tool. It seems like if I put more than four in there, it's, it's even harder to make it strip. I like them and I don't. They're, they're very rugged, but... They're either not sharp enough or they don't have enough clamp force. It seems like every time I strip, you know, more than a couple conductors, then I have to uh, put some force on top of it to make sure that it actually... You can kind of catch it once in a while in the video, but... And my other complaint is uh, the rubber that it does strip off doesn't always fall out of pliers and they sometimes get stuck in there and spend an extra few seconds just digging out the trash so that you, you know if you don't or you don't notice it the next time you go to strip something it it just completely doesn't work or it doesn't strip the right length or something Okay, the solder pot's been on long enough that it's actually fully melted. And all the ribbon cable that I just stripped, I'm going to go ahead and just tin all the leads on one end, and then the other, the other end will be for the LEDs. So they don't, it's not really necessary that they be absolutely straight. They can be fanned a little bit, but you definitely don't want them to be touching. So it's something to watch out for, and it's... Sometimes it's hard to not have that. So I always look them over, you know, move them around a little bit. Just to make sure none of them are touching. Take the take flux pin. Just run a little flux over all of them. Dip them in. There it is. Pretend. It's that easy. The great thing about this is you don't have to worry about going too far because the solder will not stick to the ribbon cable. So I can go well past the stripped leads and pull them out and it'll be just fine. But the key is you got to have that flux on there though. If I stick an end in here that I did not flux. stainless steel and scrape the top over a little bit and get all the crap off the top. If I stick that end in there that has no flux on it, it doesn't come out tinned at all. It's all there's a little glob on this end right here, but almost no flux on or almost no solder on the rest of those leads. The key is flux. Okay, this is the one part that took the least amount of time. There's only about four minutes of video here. Shrunk it down to two. Um, when I was talking about making sure the leads did not touch each other, I didn't really say why, but if they're touching each other, then they're going to bridge, and then you have to take your soldering iron and unbridge them. And it's just it's just easier if they're not touching each other in the beginning so they don't bridge so you don't have to do all that that way when you go to 
tear off an LED to install it on the top loader, it just comes right off instead of being stuck to something else. And, you know, and th this ribbon cable is 0 .05 inch spacing. I can't imagine this is going to work very well for anything less than that, uh, like one mil or 0 .025 spacing, unless the conductors are very, very, very small gauge. Because every once in a while, even with this ribbon cable, uh, I'll get a couple conductors that do bridge. Now what I'm going to do is uh, separate the ribbon into pairs. nice that they're color coded. I always pick the uh, darker color for negative and the lighter color for positive. And then I can put the flux on all the connections I want soldered. And I can basically just dip the whole thing. the solder pot. The solder will not stick to anything that doesn't have much flux on it. Of course, component legs are pretty easy to solder to without the flux. And then there, that is basically ready for install onto a top loader. Okay, this is, uh, I'm going to do this one in fast motion because it's just the same thing over and over again. But this little clip, I'm only going to show one ribbon cable worth of LEDs that I did. Uh, each ribbon cable has 10 LEDs and as you've seen in the first of the video, I counted out 63 or 62 LEDs. So. That took me over an hour to do, and I thought, no real sense in watching the same thing done over and over again 63 times. So I took one ribbon kibble worth of video and shortened it down to two minutes. Ended up being about 4.4 times normal speed. And if you stay tuned for the next track, you'll hear more about what happened.
Okay, this is the last one. As you noticed, if you were paying attention, the first few that I did, I finally realized some of the tricks that I had learned from the last few times I've, I've done this. This is like the third or fourth time I've done a big batch of LEDs like this, but instead of dipping the whole component leg down in the solder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it with the uh, my Exolite flush cutters and I'm going to bend it and then cut it. And all that's really doing is, is uh, it's going to help keep the uh, wire from sliding off the component leg. And again, keep the crap off the top of the solder. And there you have it. I realized that was an extremely long video, so I'll probably do some of it at twice the speed, maybe like the first ribbon cable, and then the rest of it will do it like maybe 10 or 100 times the speed. So yeah, I should have 62 or 3 LEDs there. It should last me quite a long time. It seems like the last time I've done this, I've only done 20 or 30. So it might be, you know, another 6 months to a year before I actually need more LEDs.